This video will go over the basics of a basic lung exam. First, like all tests, you're going to start by inspection. Um, I'm going to be inspecting for any scars or any gross deformities that I'm finding. Um, you would notice that if he had a broken rib, you'd possibly see like a flail chest where you'd have a hyperactive rib. Um, you could also see accessory muscle use, such as if the patient is having a hard time getting breath in. Um, so after I inspect, I palpate. And for palpation, you'd feel, uh, you'd feel for the lungs in 12 different locations, just like you would be for listening as well. So my two locations here are going to be um, kind of higher up in the chest, a little lower in the chest, two on each side, underneath the armpit, then three locations on the back. And I'll get to those when we get to the, uh, to the back of the exam. Uh, so what am I going to be listening for? My first one, I'm going to be feeling for tactile fremitus. And for tactile fremitus, what I need to do is I need to have the patient say 99 every time I move my hands from a different location. I'm going to be feeling for the left and the right side. Just make sure that they uh, are approximately equal. So for tactile fremitus, um, what I shouldn't feel is I shouldn't feel any uh, vibrations that are abnormally large. And if I did, that could indicate pathology. And if I found some vibrations that diminished, uh, that could also indicate pathology. So uh, can I have you say 99, please, every time I move my hands? 99, 99, 99. And again, I would also perform those three in the back, and we'll get to that later, like I said. So if the patient, if underneath my fingers, I felt an increased vibration on the patient's left side, uh, what could that indicate? Well, that could either indicate that the patient has a fluid collection or a solid mass in the field that I was listening to. Um, if I felt a decrease in vibration, it could indicate air trapping or excessive air um, or a collapsed lung. So after I feel with tactile fremitus, next I'm going to move on to percussion. And for percussion, you can either use your finger as a hammer or use a hammer, and that's the method that I prefer. Um, so what I'm going to be doing, so I'm going to be percussing, always from left to right before you move down to a new area. So what am I listening for? I'm listening for different sounds that the percussion will make. Um, it takes a good clinician to know what kind of sound uh, you're supposed to hear versus when it's an abnormal sound. So some of the different sounds can be tympanic, hyperresonant, dull, uh, flat, or just plain resonant sounds. Uh, again, I'd perform those tests on the back. So the next test that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be listening with my stethoscope. So I'm going to be auscultating the 12 lung fields uh, that I have mentioned. For these, I'm going to be using my diaphragm. And again, I'm going to move in a side-to-side -side motion before I move down. So can I have it take a deep breath in through your mouth, please? And a deep breath in every time I move from here on out. And again, I would repeat that same test on the back. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be listening for crackles, ronchi, rubs, any wheezes that I hear. And then note. Um, note what lung fields that I'm hearing those in. Next test I'm going to do is going to be bronchophony. And bronchophony is where I'm also going to be listening through my stethoscope, and the patient will say 99, just like it was in tactile fremitus, and this time I'm going to be listening. And what I should hear is I should hear a, um, just a nice 99, and if I heard the 99 get louder in any one of those locations, it could indicate that there's a consolidation in that lung field. So again, with my diaphragm, I'm going to ask the patient to say 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. So for example, if I heard the 99 louder on the patient's right side than I did on the patient's left, that could indicate that the patient has a consolidation on their right side, such as a uh, cancer, fluid buildup, 
or a uh, lung mass. So the next test is going to be egophony. And egophony tests also with the stethoscope. And I'm going to be listening to all the different lung fields. I'm going to ask the patient to say E. 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 So for this test, again, I do it in all the 12 fields. In this test, the patient's E would turn into an A. Typically, you don't want that to happen. So I'm, when I listen, I hear E, 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 E. If I heard ah, E, 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 that could indicate that the patient has a right upper lobe consolidation. Another test is going to be whisper pectoriloquy. And for this one, I'd also use my stethoscope and ask the patient to whisper one, two, three every time I move to locations. So for this test, um, I should barely be able to hear the one, two, three. And if I heard an accentuated or an increased volume of that one, two, three, it could indicate that there's a consolidation in that lung field again. And then finally, uh, we're going to move on to diaphragmatic excursion. And I'm going to show you the locations of the back lung fields. I'm going to show you the locations of the lung fields on the back. So on the front, we have the two underneath the auxilla, the armpits, and then the two superior chest locations, and the two more middle located chest locations. On the back, you're going to be listening for a lung location uh, in the superior region as well, bilaterally. You're also going to find the middle area, and then also you'll want a lower lobe uh, location. You want to make sure that uh, the patient, if it's a female, it's at least below the bra line for those inferior locations. The middle locations uh, just above the bra line and then the higher locations higher up um, higher up on the trapezius. So another test that you can do is going to be called diaphragmatic excursion. And for diaphragmatic excursion, I'm going to ask the patient to take a deep breath in and hold it. So go ahead and take a deep breath in. I'm going to start So I'm going to be finding where the sounds go from resonant to more dull. And what that's going to tell me is when it's more resonant, I'm finding the lung. You can go ahead and write your breath out. So I'm going to be finding the hyper-resonant or the resonant locations here where the lung tissue is, which indicates that there's air underneath. And when I get to the bottom of the lung, I'll hear a sound change. And that sound change is going to be more of a dull sound because there's going to be no more air. Now we're going to be getting into the kidneys and the other organs. So I'm going to make note of this, and since he's wearing a shirt, I can make a little mark in his shirt. And then now, I'm going to ask the patient to breathe all the way out and hold that out for as long as you can. All right, so that's about right here. So I have my two marks. What that one does is now that he let out all of his air, his lung is going to rise in his chest because it's not expanding anymore. And again, I go from where it goes tympanic or resonant, and then to where it goes dull again. So I have his expiratory and his inspiratory markings. So for diaphragmatic excursion, I'm going to take a ruler. I'm going to measure the distance between the two. And it is about four and a half. And that's healthy in a, in a normal person. Anywhere from three to five centimeters is going to be average. Uh, if you had an increased or a decreased diaphragmatic excursion, you could note pathology. 